Hey everyone, James with TFB TV. Today on TFB TV, I want to talk to you guys about a gun that I think is pretty exciting. Now, to give you a little bit of background, in college, I was into the same stuff everybody else was into. Uh, fraternity, uh, drinking beer, hanging out, and FNFALs. Loved foul kits, just like every good college kid. Really, it was kind of an interesting time to be into FALs in the early 2000s because the only thing you could really get were FALs that were built on parts kits and really uh, half of them were bullshit but it was really fun because you did a lot of scrounging around on message boards to try to find parts kits to try to find ammo you guys may remember uh, some of you older guys out there may remember of like buying cases of Malaysian and Indian 7.62 NATO ammo so you could feed your, your shitty kit FAL. It was fun. It was like a treasure hunt. Around the time I graduated college, I had three FALs. I had a 16, an 18, and a 21. The 18 was by far my favorite. It was an STG-58 clone built by DSA. DSA was the creme de la creme so to speak, of FALs. And to this day, they're pretty much the best, maybe even the only major manufacturer still in business, still putting out top shelf FALs. And I still think that my 18 inch STG-58 was one of the coolest rifles that I ever owned and I regret selling it. Now fast forward to January 2019. I'm walking by the DSA booth as I do every year. I always interview those guys absolutely love their stuff. Great bunch of guys that work over there. I'm walking by the booth and I freeze in my steps because I see an Israeli FAL. Surely this Israeli FAL is a clone. Israeli parts kits were always really hard to come by, so it was always a treat if you saw somebody with an Izzy or an Israeli FAL. So the FAL guy in me is like, hey, wait, what's the story here? What's going on? And I talk to the guys and they say, yeah, we got a ton of parts kits, Israeli parts kits, and we're going to be building Israeli fowls. And I was like, guys, you have got to send me one. I've always wanted to own an Izzy fowl. So DSA sent one my way a couple of months ago, and it's been a minute, I hate it, but it's been a minute since I've gotten around to reviewing it. So why did I respect the fowl as a platform to begin with? Well, it's a proven design. It's been around since the 1940s, really started seeing service in the 1950s. And when you hear proven design, proven design, proven design, where else do you hear that? Well, people talking about 1911s. Well, 1911s are outdated pieces of shit. The foul is not. The foul rifle uses my favorite type of action, and that is a short stroke recoil system with adjustable gas. Now, you know what else uses a short stroke gas system with adjustable gas? The H&K 416, the FN SCAR. A lot of the high-end piston ARs are using short stroke gas piston systems, and I think that this is the superior system of operation for a combat rifle or battle rifle. So the FAL has a very robust, simple, yet adjustable gas system. With the FAL, you're shooting a 7.62 NATO or a 308. Compare that to the 5.56 or 223 from the M16. That round tends to puss out at about 700 yards while the 7.62 NATO is still screaming at over Mach 1 speeds at 1,000 yards. You also get about twice the power from the muzzle with the 308 versus the 5.56. And interestingly enough, at about 500 yards, you're looking at three to four times the energy from the 308 versus the 5.56 because of the, all the extra energy, the ballistic coefficient, of the 308 round, that is how aerodynamic it is. It really packs a wallop even when it's pretty far down range. All that energy and that high ballistic coefficient means that this thing shoots flatter than a hot beer in terms of trajectory. And even though it uses a sophisticated gas system, it is a very simple rifle and it's very easy to take down, easier even than an AK-47. All you do, pop this little lever on the left-hand side of the receiver, your rat tail, all your guts, come out of the back. The top cover comes off very easily as well. So very easy to field strip and maintain. 
Parts are very easy to find. Magazines are still very easy to find. The ammo, of course, is very easy to find. You can just pop into about any sporting goods store and get 308, and that'll work in the foul just perfectly. And it's just one of the sexiest looking guns that I've ever seen. Before I start talking about my shooting impressions of the gun, let's get into the gritty titty in terms of history and specifications. As many of you know, the Israelis adopted the foul in 1955, and legend has it that the Israelis exchanged an Uzi license authorizing FN to produce the Uzi in exchange for a foul license to produce the FAL. The foul only served for 17 years before it was replaced in 1972 by the Galil when the Israelis figured out that the AK pattern was much better in sand than the foul. Several measures such as zigzag sand cuts and the bolts as pictured here were implemented, but to no avail. According to prevailing theory, the foul was just generally a poor performer in fine sand, such as in the deserts of the Middle East where they were used in actual combat. However, Ian McCollum of Forgotten Weapons claims that poor maintenance and improper tuning of the gas system by untrained soldiers ultimately caused the foul to fall out of favor. Either theory is certainly plausible because the FAL is indeed a simple and reliable rifle. While Israeli FAL kits were desirable in the past because of how rare they were, they were also desirable because they had several features and upgrades not present on most of their European brethren. Perhaps the most significant and recognizable difference is the trademark Israeli handguards. They are half steel, half wood handguards. Apparently, the Israelis went half wood, half steel, because full wood handguards had a problem with cracking, while the half and half did not. Moreover, the wooden part has corrugated steel inserts inside the wood to prevent it from cracking and to act as a heat shield. These robust, durable, and handsome handguards from the Israeli foul are a lot better than the normal shitty plastic handguards you found on South American, Asian, and European fouls that often would get too hot to the touch even after firing just a few magazines. The Israeli foul also had more robust front sight ears on the front sight post. The wood stock is more sought after by people who care to have a wood stock on their gun. Arguably, it looks much better and it works very well. Another cool component of the Israeli FAL unique to the design was the forward assist in the charging handle. So it has a non-reciprocating charging handle, which is very handy. However, if for some reason the bolt didn't go forward all the way, then you could force it forward. All you would have to do is press the charging handle inwards and begin pressing it forwards. At some point, that charging handle nub on the inside of the receiver would catch a protrusion on the bolt and you could then manually seat the bolt all the way forward. The Israeli Fowl also featured a slightly larger paddle magazine release that was easier to use than some copies with a lower profile release. It also features a horizontal takedown lever rather than the vertical takedown lever that was commonly situated in between the buttstock and the top cover. Use of the Israeli takedown lever is so easy that even a Hickok 45 viewer can do it. Rumor has it that the vertical release could be accidentally depressed by soldiers when firing, especially during full auto strings. Speaking of full auto, while most Israeli fouls have a three-notch selector, the safety has an extrusion built into it to prevent soldiers from flipping the switch to full auto. Because of the heavy recoil of the foul in full auto, Firing full auto and trying to make shots that counted was an exercise in futility. Also, the Israeli foul is a metric gun, not an inch gun. It's easier to find parts and magazines for guns that were built on the metric pattern rather than the inch pattern used in Commonwealth guns, such as the L1A1. If you're interested in looking into the foul, make sure you know the difference between metric and inch, and I highly recommend that you get a metric gun. As I've mentioned several times in the video, Israeli parts kits used to be very difficult, if not impossible, to obtain in the U.S., and if you could find one, it would be a heavy barrel model that was 13 pounds. It also usually included a heavy bipod. This heavy model was intended for use as a squad automatic weapon, not as an infantry gun, so it was impractical for most shooters, but it was desired nonetheless just because of its quality, features, and rarity. In short, Izzy heavy guns are cool, 
but they absolutely suck ass as pragmatic guns, and they were usually cobbled together by random gunsmiths. Izzy light kits were the most desirable because they were about three pounds lighter than the heavy kits, but they were nearly impossible to find, and they would fetch $2,000 or more. This is no longer because of the DSA Hebrew Hammer Israeli FAL. So let's talk about the features of the Hebrew Hammer. It uses a surplus Israeli light parts kit brought in by DSA, and they're made on top quality new U.S. DSA receivers, and they use brand new 21-inch barrels. The U.S.-made barrel and receiver stop them short of being full-on collector guns, but the trade-off is that they make excellent shooters. The copy I had was shooting very tight groups at 100 yards. This ammo bag f***ing sucks. Be better just not even using it. Shit. Ugh, that's better. All right, let's go take a look at what we did. Ah. All right, so iron sights, just using a really bad bag rest. One, two, three, four, five, six. Half dozen rounds, all within a few inches of each other. So far, so good with the Izzy Fowl today. It's been running flawlessly and been shooting well. It came zeroed out of the factory perfectly. Obviously this top cover doesn't have a scope mount. That would be weird, right? That's not correct. I was like, God. I can't believe this rifle jammed after it's been shooting perfectly all day. And I realized I, I had the carry handle just like that in front of the ejection port like a freaking idiot. Um, <laughs> way to ruin a perfect day. And instead, it wasn't the rifle, it was you, you idiot. To go over the specs, this is of course a 308 or a 762 NATO semi-automatic rifle, a US-made Type 1 carry handle cut receiver with a carry handle, and it features authentic Israeli markings and a very cleverly hidden away serial number inside the magwell. It also has a US-made gas piston and a US-made metric pistol grip. So what are the Israeli parts? Well, it uses an original Israeli surplus forward assist cocking handle the original Israeli steel lower receiver and internals, the original Israeli wooden handguard and buttstock, an original Israeli 20-round magazine body with a new U.S.-made follower, spring, and floor plate. These rifles will include a sling, an owner's manual, and a hard case, and they weigh 10.3 pounds, which is much lighter than those 13-pound heavy kit guns out there. It's also likely going to be much higher quality and the surplus parts kits imported by DSA are in impeccable shape. DSA is offering two versions, the soldier grade and the officer grade. The soldier grade comes with a non-threaded straight barrel and no muzzle device. The officer grade is only $100 more and includes a Duracoat refinish, a 916 by 24 left-hand threaded barrel, which includes a Belgian-style combo device flash hider installed, and an extra set of U.S.-made fiberglass original-style furniture for banging around your truck and the range. Inspection of this gun reveals that the surplus parts are in great shape and the quality, fit, and finish that you expect from DSA. In my estimation, this is a top-tier foul at a price below the usual market value for now. I've been out of touch with foul parts prices these days, but it's probably a decent deal to just buy the gun, set aside the Israeli lower and parts, and then use a cheap surplus kit on the upper receiver and barrel for the range. Lead time on the guns is three to four months and DSA is building them as fast as they can make them. So if you've ever considered the foul, I think this is an excellent copy at a great price. Shooting impressions, guys. This gun shoots like a foul. That's all there is to it. The Izzy, again, is one of the better examples, one of the higher quality builds that you're gonna get and one of the cooler looking fouls, but it shoots like a foul. That means that it's got pretty heavy kick, 
I know that this is debatable, but in my opinion, a well-tuned foul, if you get your gas system tuned properly for your ammo, kicks far less than a G3 or an HK91. Controversial opinion, I know, but I swear to you, it's true. That said, these guys still kick pretty hard, making full auto fire virtually a waste of time, albeit a fun one. So yeah, it's got a little kick, but it feels good. You know, it's like you've, you've got some power behind it. It's almost like shooting slugs out of a 12 gauge. When you shoot this versus shooting like in an AR-15 or an M16, you feel like this is what God must feel like shooting a rifle. It just feels so powerful, like you could smite anything in your path. I mean, in terms of the FAL rifle, this shoots like an FAL. It isn't like this blows everything else out of the water. What you're really looking at with the Izzy from DSA is you're looking at attention to detail, fit and finish, great quality and reliability. True to form, this gun doesn't have an optics mount, but if you wanna make a shooter out of it, very easy to replace the top cover. Again, all you do is hit your takedown lever in the back. The top cover just slides right off. And you can get an optic mounting cover from DSA that they make and it'll uh, set in with screws and it'll actually hold a, a pretty good zero. So if you want to mount optics, you can. I didn't have the ability to do that, but even using the standard sights from the foul, shooting at 100 yards prone, using a backpack as support, I was putting up two to three inch, five round groups with the foul and I believe I was using Federal ammo. I didn't really run this thing through the ringer. I shot maybe 100 to 200 rounds through it, but it shot perfectly, functioned perfectly, fed perfectly, no complaints. Guys, this actually would make a great shooter if you're so inclined, but I think it would make a pretty decent collector's gun too. In conclusion, I absolutely love this gun. If you're on the fence about it, I say buy it. If you could find something like this even 10, 15 years ago, built on a DSA receiver and using an Israeli kit, I mean, it would be $2,000. They are going to run out of these. So if you've ever wanted one, or if this video has tempted you, then maybe you should think about picking one up. The kit that I got was in fantastic, like new shape. Like it looks great on this officer model that they sent me. So if you think my review is too glowing, I want you to know that DSA didn't pay me to do this review. They don't sponsor the program. They've got nothing to do with me financially. They didn't give me this gun. I don't even have a writer's price on it. As far as I know, I have to send it back. Of course, I'm gonna ask them if I can buy it, but I don't want anyone to think that because I was so happy with this gun um, that I'm, I'm pimping DSA stuff for whatever reason. But that said, you guys know me, I always try to say something negative in all of my videos. What I will say negative about this gun, the I, I love the finish, I love the refinishing. They've Cerakoted or Duracoated uh, the upper and lower receiver. It's a nice flat black and it looks great, but it also kind of contrasts with the darker phosphating or whatever the finish, original finish was in the Israeli. It's not quite the same color. If they would have done a gray, it would have been oh, perfect. But it's flat black. I don't think that's gonna bother anybody. I, it still took my breath away when I opened it. I was like, this thing's beautiful. I wish both versions would have gone with a threaded barrel. The officer model is the only one that comes with a threaded barrel and I think it's worth the 100 bucks just for the threaded barrel and the combo brake flash hider alone. So I guess I would say get an officer model, you're gonna get probably a nicer parts kit, plus you get a threaded barrel, plus you get an extra set of all black furniture if you don't wanna ruin your nice Israeli furniture. Finally, if you want more information on this gun, of course you can go to DSA's website, but I'm a big fan of the Fal Files, that's F-A-L-F-I-L-E-S dot com. That's where I kind of grew up on these guns, and that's where I first started buying parts kits, whatever. I think it was the first gun message board I ever joined, probably 15 or 16 years ago. So you can go on to the foul files, and you'll find people who've actually purchased it, their honest opinions about this gun. Now, what I saw was positive. I didn't see any negative reviews, but I highly recommend that if you're thinking about buying one of these, or any foul for that matter, that you guys go check out foul files. So to wrap it up, I'm impressed. I think this is awesome. This gun drips sex. It looks good. 
And I think it's a great deal at $1,300 to $1,400. And once these parts kits dry up, I think that these things are even going to go up in value. I wouldn't fault you for buying this and just locking it up in your safe. But at the price, you can't even really feel bad if you take it out and just blast with it. Good job, DSA. Thanks for sending me a copy of this gun. Thank you, as usual, to Ventura Munitions, who sent the ammo that I used for review of the Izzy Fowl from DSA. Thank you, as usual, to Blue Alpha Gear. They're my dogs, and if you're looking for an awesome combat or range belt or just something for every day, go to Blue Alpha Gear. Don't forget to support us on Patreon, guys. And thank you, our subscribers, viewers, everybody else. I appreciate it. See you next week. Yeah.